Hello everybody, this is Iced Blood. Welcome back to Final Fantasy 13. Hopefully you enjoyed the first episode, and hopefully you're back for more. Let's just load up the game and get right back into the thick of things, because we've got plenty of ground to cover. Uh, let's see, I think we want this one. Yeah. So this is a fun little part of the game that I really enjoy. Um, when the game is loading up your save data, it gives you a little narrative update on where you were last time. Nice little recap. Uh, go ahead and pause the video if you want to read this. I would read it out loud, but it moves a little fast for me, so. This is a nice touch if you have a, a gap between play sessions and you don't necessarily remember where you were last time, the game will remind you. I really like that. So, here we go. I agree, Saz. Things are not looking all that pretty. Uh, many and various enemies stalk the roads that you must travel. Upon entering an enemy's detection radius, the mini-map in the upper right corner of the screen will flash in warning. Alright. So here's the part where I admit something I am loath to admit. And that is, this game is rather linear. Okay, there aren't many branching paths. Uh, for the most part, especially in the first half of the game, there is one path for you to take, and you can't really do anything about it. Now, this is a big complaint among fans of the series, who are used to a more open-ended um, strategy when it comes to delivering um, the game's story and the game's world. And I can understand that. I really can. I'm not trying to downplay the fact that this game has its flaws. However, I think that the experience of this linear passageway, you know, this series of hallways, is actually far more worthwhile than it is detrimental, shall we say. Um... Yes, I will admit, a lot of these videos will probably be just filled with me walking forward and getting into fights, and then we have cutscenes, and then we do it all over again, and that could get boring, and I can understand that really I can. But then again, I am a big fan of the Pokemon franchise, which basically amounts to the same damn thing, so, you know, it's kind of my thing at this point, and I'm not trying to fight it. So hopefully, um, you know, it won't be as boring as the game is often criticized as being for you who are watching. You can see that there's a slight increase in strategic merit to the fighting as we continue, mostly when it comes to enemy placement. Um, Lightning has two abilities right now, and that's her attack and then Blitz. And the thing about Blitz is it is an AoE, an area of effect attack and it's a circle, so it'll hit any enemy within the circle. So depending on the placement of the enemies during the, the combat, it can hit multiple, which in, in which case it's probably worth it, or it only hits one, in which case you're probably better off just doing a double attack. And so you can rely on auto um, the auto battle to figure out the strategic, uh, the best choice, you know, strategically for you, or you can pick it out yourself. Purged, I get. But taking on trained soldiers? <laughs> Better to die than get sent to pulse. It's hell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, hell's not sounding too bad. Because this place ain't exactly paradise. Domesticated peacekeepers. Nothing to worry about. Oh, no, nothing at all. Maybe not for a soldier girl, but I'm trying to say, hey, 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 hey! I really like the voice acting, actually. Um, whoops. Yeah, the map doesn't actually tell us much at the moment. Uh, okay. So, like, right here, Blitz is our best choice because it hits all three enemies. But now they're starting to move. Um, and so it's less advantageous to use. Auto battle is basically making the choice for us. Right there was pretty much a waste of a Blitz. Now, again, this is only a slight improvement over you know, hit button kill things that we got in the first episode, and I'm not trying to say that there's a lot, you know, there's, oh, there's so much more depth to this combat system than people give it credit for. There is more depth, 
It's not huge. I, I, I can admit the flaws. We're not going to focus on those, but I will I will mention them when they show up. Alright, so let's open up another chest here and see what we get. Two potions! Nice thing about potions is they heal your entire party uh, instead of just one person. That's, uh, okay. Let's save up. Uh, we'll do new. This is just kind of a, hopefully this won't bog up my hard drive. I'm not sure how much space each save file takes up, but I'd like to have uh, a new save file for each time we hit a save point. Just for, you know, in case any footage is lost or in case I forget to record, which happened in my last Dark Souls video. Uh, so, we just want to make sure that uh, things stay on track. So, let's see. Yeah, I see, not, not the most riveting entertainment, but, you know, you have to learn the system, folks. This is basically still the tutorial level, and so it's not all that strenuous. Ooh, a phoenix down. Nice. I wonder if that... Does that... Can you use that on two people? If there's... Because I know you have a three-person adventuring party. Can you use a phoenix down on two people, I wonder? Are all items like the potions? I'm actually not sure. We'll find that out, eventually. I really feel like this game has a very similar vibe in its opening as Final Fantasy VII. Maybe it's the whole, like, science fiction, steampunk kind of thing. Um, but I, I really like the how, how this game starts. It's basically the, the in media res theory of just jumping right into the thick of things and not really explaining anything. Uh, I really appreciate that. I, I th it's one of my favorite ways to, to start a story uh, in general, whether it's a written story or a game story like this one. Um, I think it's a great method. I really do. Um, too much, like, groundwork can really bog down an opening. Oh boy. What well, isn't very preemptive if you announce it? Exactly. How are you gonna be preemptive if you, like, announce yourself? That's... Oh, we don't need this. I know how to use items, I'm not adult. Actually, we've already used items before. Uh, I used a potion in the last episode, so I already know how to use potions. It's not important. There we go. Down boy. Girl. I don't know how genders work in these things. Yay! More five stars! I don't know if the ranking system actually means anything. I think it, like, increases your chances of getting more items. Oh, shit. Oh, lovely. Yeah, see, doesn't it look like Midgar? Those of you who've played Seven, doesn't this kind of look like Midgar? Do we turn back? There's no time. Ah, uh, oh boy. What do you suggest we do? Quiet. Hmm. <laughs> oh, a lover's quarrel, is it? I do not ship lightning and saz. Just saying. Now that might not necessarily be subtle character development through interaction, but I do think it's a solid one. I really like how they set this up. Very unlikely, you know, pair of companions trying to make it through a war zone. Fighting dogs, you know how it is. See, one of the things that I appreciated immediately when I played this game for the first time was the cast of characters. Now, we've only met two of them so far, granted, uh, but we will meet several others, and the biggest thing that I appreciate about this game's narrative is the way that these folks interact. I think 
that this is the strongest cast of characters that Final Fantasy has had in a long time. Now, that puts me on an island. Um, if any of you watching this are one of the people that don't like this game, and I'm not saying you're wrong, but you're wrong, uh, <laughs> you might think I'm on drugs for saying that this is a strong cast of characters. You know, uh, Lightning is an automaton, and Saz is just a token joke character, and Snow is an idiot, and, you know, the others are, have their own problems. But I really feel like this cast is exceptionally strong. I'll try and show you why I think that as we go on. Uh, we'll save up. Alright. There we go. Activate. Whoa. Now we're getting fancy. I think any good story sets it up with a lot of questions. And the idea, of course, is throughout the course of the story, those questions get answered. And as soon as those questions get answered, more are posed. And then those get answered, and, you know, we go on and on. There are a lot of questions that start us off here. Like, who the hell that is? And how we're going to get out of this. Well, actually, that's not that hard. Um, attack chain. I'm going to take a look at this tutorial because I'm not sure I remember. Uh, okay. Auto battle or attack. All right. And then... Oh, okay. This is the stagger thing. All right, I got it. All right, so this is um, a part of the battle system that does add a little bit of complexity and that is the more you attack a character uh, and that little meter there on the top right that is talking about as that fills up um, the enemy's weaknesses are basically like revealed and you have a, a short amount of time where you do a lot of damage when they're staggered right there uh, a staggered enemy takes greater damage when attacked and once the gauge is empty the enemy is no longer staggered you have to start the process over so the idea, of course, is to lay on the damage when an enemy's staggered. And this guy, he's kind of shaped up. Though, though, you know, look at his armor and everything. He's a really strong enemy. So we're meant to reach the point where he's staggered in order to defeat him at all. If we don't use the right tactic, we don't have the right uh, moves or whatever it needs to actually stagger somebody. Because that does change depending on who you're fighting. Uh, who and what you're fighting. Uh, if you don't do it the right way, they won't get staggered, and then you won't be able to win. Um, so that is a bit of strategic um, nuance to the battle system. Oh boy, lots and lots of lasers. What's the matter? You quit, didn't you? Did you think I'm gonna go out there and just tell everybody your secret? After the foul sea. There's a big question for us. What the hell's a foul sea? Fallacy? Ha ha ha. Yeah, whatever, anyway. It's so like right there. You have an overly talkative character in Saz. He's, he talks when he's stressed. And then Lightning, who clams up when she's stressed. Didn't have a choice. Ooh, uh oh. Is there darkness in Saz, Catroy? Find out next time! No, we're not quite done. We have a new angle to explore. And I'm looking forward to this one. Oh, that sounds awesome. Successful relocation. Fun juxtaposition there. Talk of peace and sacrifice in the middle of a war zone. We. Haha. 
sake, exterminate. Huge. You stay here. So sorry. I didn't mean to. These people need heroes. Here. <clears throat> you keep your cool, and they will too. You got it? Got it. What's our motto? The army's no match for Nora. That a boy. There he is, Mr. Snowvilliers, renowned in the fandom as a raging idiot. He is perhaps my favorite character in all of digital fiction. I love this man. I, I would have this man's children if I could. Absolutely love him. Again, I know, I'm on an island. Don't judge me! Um, okay, so next leg of this introductory chapter will be with uh, Mr. Villiers here. But we're going to use that save point right there and end the video here. Uh, relatively short, I know, but I'm trying to keep a really tight schedule with these videos. So hopefully you will forgive me. I think that the shorter videos will mean more frequent updates. So I will see you next time. Bye-bye.